morning, ladies and gentlemen, and I hope you have had a, a good sessions in the morning. Uh, I'm Jerry Zhao from Panasonic Automotive. I'm so sorry that I cannot join this year AMM on site, but would like to give a presentation remotely to together witness the birth of this new expert group, tentatively named as a software defined expert group which was combined from previous virtualization expert group and container and mesh expert group. Today, uh, on behalf of this new SDVEG, I will introduce how AGL is approaching SDV. I understand that this session is uh, approaching your, your lunch time, and I hope this trendy topic can be the uh, appetizer of your, your lunch. Um, first, let me give some backgrounds. So no other industry is undergoing such a massive technology uh, technology change as, motor, as automotive. You know, techno, technical trends such as case, connected, automo, autonomous, shared electrification have been significantly made software and electronic system more and more essential and even defines the value of the whole vehicle. On the other hand, when automotive, automotive industry gradually shifted to adopt these new trends, critical function safety, quality and security requirements, increasing varying harness cost, and even more complex, uh, complicated integration and tasks and so on, all these challenges have been suddenly put on the OEM and tier one's desks and have been become their headaches. In order to solve these issues, there is a new trend emerging recently in the industry and it, and it is called software defined vehicle. Then you may ask what is software defined vehicle and how to make it possible? There are three aspects. First, Automotive functions should be abstracted or say decoupled from the hardware. Software components, no matter it is a small matter application or a huge IVI system, should be able to reuse on different hardware environments so that OEM can preser preserve their software property across different car models or car generations. Second, it should be a cloud native microservices development model so that the software components can be developed in the virtual ECU on cloud and seamlessly deployed into the vehicle hardwares. Applications or services should be packaged as small as possible, for example, using containers, so that such kind of components can be used as pieces of puzzles easily to be updated, substituted, and reused in other software. And then if the hardware abstraction and microservice-based development can be achieved, functions or features will be able to continuously update it over the air and lead to the continuous evolution of the vehicle. In a world, uh, from architectural architectural point of view, the key point for software defined vehicles is a, achieving hardware consolidation and virtualization in vehicle microservices and application encapsulation. By abstracting hardware from software, you can simply deep, uh, deep, uh, development for services in vehicle, speed up tests and the validation stages and improve the accuracy of this test to achieve a real automotive DevOps process. So in general, there is a trend in the evolution of the architecture for the in-vehicle hardware consolidation. In the past, for the traditional architecture, there are a lot of ECUs to be used in the vehicle. And this case, uh, this situation is even getting uh, worsen when uh, the, the case trend has uh, coming to the vehicle world. That means 
in order to fulfill those features, you need to have more than 100 ECUs in the card, and then you will have to tons of varying between them. So such kind of varying harness cost are really, really huge, and the weight of the vehicle will be uh, very uh, large. And so that this will be not suitable for the electronic vehicle. On the other hand, with this kind of com com uh, complex complexity, it is really hard to manage the software and even to update, update them. So um, the automotive world has already uh, gradually uh, evolved to the next generation architecture, which is in the central here is the domain architecture. So we have different function domains to consolidate ECUs to, to, to have this kind of a cluster domain architecture. And with this kind of architecture, more ECUs can be consolidated to one single cluster so that it can greatly reduce the, uh, the number of ECUs. But that's the, not the whole theory. So the final future of the automotive in terms of software defined vehicle is defined as zonal architecture, which will have a more centralized high performance computing computer, which will act as the brain of the whole vehicle. And beside that, there will be a several zone issues that controls the uh, different uh, zone components. And this kind of architecture will uh, optimize the whole vehicle uh, cost and uh, can, can greatly reduce the uh, comp complexity of the whole vehicle software architecture. I think we have already covered a lot of background of, around the software defined vehicle. So now I would like to come back to AGL. So actually, AGL has uh, followed this kind of concept from the very beginning since eight years ago. When AGL was established, all the members believed that the future vehicles will be defined by the software. In particular, we have had two working groups to work particularly for this topic, virtualization EG and container and service mesh EG. When looking back to the activities of VERT EG led by Panasonic, the members in this EG have been con con continuously contributing to constructing a common device virtualization framework with VertIO so that AGL software can be decoupled from diverse hardware targets across different vehicle variants or generations. Such environment parity can be achieved whether on a single ECU, multiple ECUs, and whether the issue of physical at the edge or virtual in the cloud. On the other hand, AWS-led container EG was working on enabling AGL to running on AWS cloud together with Vert EG and realizing workload orchestration with AGL across single or multiple nodes inside or an outside vehicle. As announced in the previous keynote sessions, members from two EGs will work jointly hand by hand to form a new expert group to further accelerate AGL developments related to software defined vehicle. And this will, uh, will try to make a way to bring SDV values to real vehicle production for AGL as early as possible. In the next section, I will uh, in particularly uh, introduce detailed technical direction for this EEG and uh, we and uh, which has been inherited from the previous uh, two expert groups. So the first topic is about that device virtualization to achieve environment parity across cloud and edge and across different ECU hardwares. So actually in the automotive computing architecture regarding devices, there are two existing issues. First, 
depending on car grid or car model, equipped device may vary a lot. Even for the same car OEM, there are a variety of displays for different car grids or car models with different number of displays, different size, different aspect, aspect ratios. And thus, we need a common abstraction method for such diverged devices to preserve the software asset. Second, automotive allocation policy of application to ECU may be different from allocation policy of a particular device. Optimal location of application could be decided by computing resources necessary for the functionality or even physical distance to the physical devices. Hence, traditional architecture force applications or software to feed hardware architectures. This will be a big blocker when you want to achieve a software-defined vehicle to, to develop and update your hardware free uh, your software free from hardware or physical restrictions. So from application point of view, location transparency is another critical issue for, for the whole industry need to solve. And though all these two topics, we need a common device virtualization technology to satisfy these two necessities. When considering about centralized architecture, actually the same necessity is still there because a single centralized system still consists of multiple virtual machines. And as shown in this figure, logical architectures stays similar. Furthermore, as virtual ECU, which means a ECU allows to develop automotive software directly on server or cloud. Even in this kind of environment, similar issues happen because not only different cloud platforms and servers are diverse in hardware to be used, but also the cloud hardware itself are quite different from the automotive hardware, in particular in terms of peripheral devices. Thus, we need a common device virtualization framework to decouple software from the diverse hardware environments. Application software is not involved to the specific details of physical world. Application just need to treat the virtual display or storage model, for example, and this kind of virtual display or virtual storage is mapped to the physical world by the device virtualization software behind the scene. Thus, application software asset is preserved among various physical configurations, and this makes software defined vehicle a reality. In general, device virtualization with Vertel, which is uh, developed in the VertiG, benefits in establishing a complete and healthy ecosystem for AGL to enhance inter interchangeability and the interoperability in various scenarios, no matter it is hypervisor environment, non-hypervisor environment, cloud environment, or even multi-ECU environment. So let's look at the previous situations around AGL virtualization before the word I introduced. Actually, the parallel virtual device driver layer and even part of application platform layer such as uh, AGL is dependent on the both hypervisor and SOC. This was because most of the previous hypervisor solutions had pro proprietary parallel virtual device implementation and thus has incompatible parallel virtual device interfaces for upper layer software. It was undesirable fragmentation so that OEM and tier one would not have enough freedom of choices in virtualization solutions. It was unhealthy from ecosystem point of view. S 
So in this background, Asia World EG solved these pain points by introducing WorldL as the standard framework for device virtualization into AGL. WorldL is an open source implementation of para virtual device framework and has been utilized extensively in the cloud in the cloud and server world in a region starting from 2008. By introducing WorldL to AGL, there are common interfaces and implementation of para virtualization devices. Thus, enhanced freedom is guaranteed to choose optimal hypervisor and SOC for automotive needs without modifying upper layer software significantly. When we talk about virtualization in AGL, this is critical important. Regarding the virtual work for hypervisor environment, thanks to the various contributing companies in the VertEG, we have got most of basic uh, virtual in interfaces supported in AGL. And now we already supported virtual interfaces defined by the latest OSIS version 1.2 released in the previous summer, and also covered some necessary devices like camera, Bluetooth, and CAN, which are still under standardization in OSIS and start and uh, ready for release for the uh, standard 1.3 in two or three years later. So great success in supporting WorldIO uh, virtualized use case doesn't stop our steps. We have imagined a world that WorldIO to be used as a well-defined device health, even in numbered AGL, multi-ECO architectures, and even for cloud. Through WorldIO, we would like to achieve the maximize the commonality of AGL software across different SOCs among virtual and non-virt cloud and edge environments. And let me introduce our progress. Regarding the virtual work for non-hypervisor environment, we have finished the design and implementation of a common virtual based HAL layer, virtual loopback, portable to execute on both native and virtual environments. This architecture has been verified with virtual block, virtual random generator and input devices. In, per in particular for input devices, we added, touch, uh, we added touch sensitivity control to solve the product ready readiness IVI requirements coming from the IVIEG which is missing in the traditional WordL input features. Regarding the details of this work, our EG member, Timos, from Virtual Open System will give a deep in-depth later today in the room Saphir 1. So please do not hesitate to go to that room and listen to his presentation. When it comes to the virtual work for multi-ECU, we Panasonic developed a unified virtual display technology called Unified HMI based on WordIO GPU. And it can have integrated control of multiple display on distributed SOC systems, no matter hypervisor is used or not. It maps the multiple physical displays of cockpit or cabin into a single large virtual display where rendering each applications running on different socks to the arbitrary region of the virtual display. Through this technology, we have, re we have relieved the, 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 the strict restrictions of relationship and the dependency between ECU and the function displays, which are blocking the cockpit UX design and shifted, and shifted to a fully flexible ECU and display relationship, which enables more cockpit UX innovation. The following page gives a high level architecture of unified HMI. Thanks to the front end and the back, back end, or say client server architecture of WordL, we separate the front end and back end 
and allocate them to different socks. The application itself running on SOC or VMA, but can be remotely rendering on another SOC or other, another VM's displays by transferring the virtual GPU commands through communication network like Ethernet. This architecture allows you to have your application anywhere in a multi-SOC, multi-VM systems, but still rendering it to any display you would like. It further en enables you to offload the graphical com com computing to another hardware and leave the central SOC focusing on CPU computing. We have already open sourced this remote virtual GPU framework in our public GitHub and ready to start integration from next AGL release. And we will start it discussion in the EG and set from next month. And if you are interested in these topics, welcome to join the discussion. Last, I would like to introduce our latest virtual work for the cloud native environment. Our goal is to establish a reference environment of cloud native AGL by making virtual and container orchestration work on both cloud and edge AGL instances, and they enable developers to develop the HMI services on cloud environment, which graphic and audio can be verified on local clients. To illustrate this concept, actually our EG member, Francois from Shokubai, has already created a demo to run the native AGL with Vertel on the top of Apple Mac OS 13 virtualization framework. This can be done without any changes to AGL thanks to Vertel. You can find more details in the YouTube link uh, on the slide. On the other hand, we also collect, uh, collaboratively work together with AGL uh, with, the, the, with AWS to enable the cloud native AGL so that AGL can be run on the AWS Graviton server and, the, and then the same IVI binary can, de, can be deployed to the AGL reference hardware. So we have showed a QT based cloud native demo in the CES and we will give a updated version with Flutter in the embedded world AGL boost. Another important direction in this new EG will be targeting workload orchestration, which will enable microservice development with AGL. So this will be also introduced in another session tomorrow, and I will just uh, give a high level overview. So in the previous year, we have already set up a prototype for the cloud AGL AMI, and also a, a preliminary version of workload orchestrator. So we will continue this work and uh, led by AWS, it will be uh, planned to make to public to community member as soon as possible. As I mentioned, for the details of this part, Nenot from AWS will give a technical insight sessions tomorrow and pl please do not hesitate to check it. In. Last, I will go through some basic future plans of the, this new EG. So this new EG will discover the existing issues and expectation of OEMs towards AGL use for achieving software defined vehicle in real production. And this will be done in the set and face-to-face -face meetings, for example. And we will definitely jointly work together with other EGs ICEG, IVIEG, so and even SAT to work out real world requirements and use cases for AGL in terms of SDV. We will then start to design, develop, and deploy 
an SDV reference book through the uh, the this year and next year, and we are ready to 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 we are planning to give a SDV reference book for AGL by the end of next year. However, we are also stressing the ag agileability so that we are planning to give step by step MVPs so that we can have a intermediate results, for example, in CES 2024. But this roadmap is still under discussion and, and going to have more details to be break down. So we sincerely welcome your participation in this EG to discuss about this. Last, I will give a advertisement of about the uh, related EG presentation and shows. So first, as I mentioned, there will be two technical insights sessions held in the AMM today and tomorrow in the Sophia One uh, meeting rooms. And please do not, uh, please do not hesitate to go there and have a look and discuss the detailed technical points. Second, we will also show an updated cloud native AGL demo with a Flutter version in the AGL booth in the next week embedded work, embedded world. And if you also drop by embedded world, please go to the AGL booth and have a check. Last but not least, we sincerely hope you can join us to co-develop the critical technologies enabling software-defined vehicle, which can define a bright futures for AGL and vehicles. Thank you.